Coming up on Mustang News, Cal Poly has a new ASI president. The name was announced just hours ago. Once again, a commemorative display on Dexter Lawn has been vandalized. And come with us on a tour to a hidden gem on the Central Coast. Broadcasting live from Cal Poly in beautiful San Luis Obispo, this is Mustang News. Hello and thank you for joining us for Mustang News. I'm Eric Tanosley. And I'm David Klein. Mustang News starts now. Cal Poly is welcoming the new ASI president next fall. Third year agricultural science major Jana Colombini will begin as the new ASI president this fall. Colombini says she has lots of support from her fr uh, friends and family through the campaign process. <laughs> Honestly, I really can't find the words. Um, I'm really thankful for everyone who voted for me. My campaign team has been supporting me for the past couple weeks. Um, my brother Jason, he's just been there every single step of the way. Um, Nick Paiva, Emma McDevitt, Anthony Haddad, they've just been helping the entire way and I appreciate their support. Alpha Gamma Delta has been supporting me too. Um, just everyone, I, I, I can't even find the words right now. <laughs> Colombini has been involved with ASI since her freshman year. She has served as a vice chair of the board of directors and as chair of It's On Us committee for sexual assault awareness. Colombini plans for her time in office to be focused around three words, care, communicate, and connect. If you've walked by Dexter Lawn lately, you've probably noticed a map display of the Middle East. The Cal Poly Armenian Students Association laid out the map on Monday in commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. The map features the history of the genocide as well as death toll counts of areas in the Middle East that were affected, except the piece of the map featuring Armenia was stolen. ASA member Gerber Delanchian said the ASA put the display together to raise awareness and gain recognition of the event as a genocide. We can see that even right now some people are, even at Cal Poly, are trying to wipe out the Armenia off the map. I mean, that's what their action stands for because if you take a the view of the map, you can see that they only took the section that Armenia existed on it. ASA Secretary Eric Babajanian said he was angered that someone would steal it, especially on the 100-year anniversary of the genocide. I believe their incentive was just kind of to talk down on us because we're such a small country, you know. We, they just want to, they just don't care what we believe, what we know what happened. It makes you show that we are as this resilient. We're not going to just let them step on us, you know. I really feel like the fact that this part is taken makes it show that we're even more present here. Baba Janian said that the piece is stolen every year when they put the display up, but Cal Poly has yet to confirm it as a hate crime. In light of the vandalism, Baba Janian said he was pleased to see how many people stopped to look at the display. The display will be up until April 22nd. There was no shortage of creativity this past weekend during the College of Architecture and Environmental Design's annual Design Village. Allison Stoff has more on how the students got their hands dirty. Nestled in the hills of Poly Canyon, Architecture Graveyard became home to dozens of students' open house weekend. Design Village is an annual event hosted by the College of Architecture and Environmental Design and is open to students of all majors. Each team of students compete by building shelters that house them for the duration of the weekend. Visitors are able to vote for their favorite design to win the People's Choice Award. The competition includes schools from across the nation. Well, it's been amazing because this is my first year here, actually. So everything's been a new experience for us. And this is like the first time our, our college has have had like three separate teams with like three completely different designs. Although students are given creative freedom in their designs, many students chose to keep in spirit with the competition's theme. It's decided to have it spin and use light so it actually creates um, more of an experience of experiencing an aura rather than just uh, trying to look at something and believe it's an aura. Coming from the College of Business, the Industrial Technology and Apprenticeship Club is the only Cal Poly team who competed. We are the only Cal Poly team competing, which I find is very strange because all the architecture students have to do this for their freshman year. And it'd be really cool to see other teams really do this because I'd like to see, you know, what, you know, maybe uh, an engineering team would do or, you know, even uh, majors like ag or something else to really exemplify a theme with what they learn in their majors. Aura is a six annual design village competition. Allison Stoff, Mustang News. Many Cal Poly students nicknamed the event Slow Cella as the event falls during the same weekend as the co popular concert series. The University Square on Foothill Boulevard between Santa Rosa and Choro Streets has been under construction for the past couple of months. Here's more on the development. 
Renovations to the university square on Foothill Boulevard are almost finished. After weeks of construction, a new Lassen's grocery store is ready to open by the end of the month. For many residents in the Foothill and Choro area, this is the first grocery store to open since Hagen's closed its doors last October. Before the plans for a new Lassen's, many students and people like Sarah Gamblin had to drive 10 to 15 minutes to get groceries. I live on North Choro and I uh, used to go to Albertsons and then that closed and there's Hagen's and then that closed and now there's nothing there. And now I either go to Trader Joe's or Vaughn's, which both are like 15, 20 minute drives. There is a Spartan Final that's closer, but I don't know. I've never been to one and I'm scared to go there. So. The nearest market for people in the Foothill and Choro area is Lincoln Deli. Besides that, the new Spartan Final, nearly three miles away, is the closest option. According to Lassen's workers, the supermarket is opening in the next week and a half. Across from where Lassen's is opening, Rite Aid has already opened its stores at a new location. This store is larger than the previous location that was next to Foothill Cyclery. Along with the Lassen's and Rite Aid, Scout Coffee Company is opening a new location where University Barbershop used to be. This could mean a loss of some business for Black Horse Espresso and Bakery on the corner of Foothill and North Choro. Black Horse, like right down the street, and that's where I usually go do homework, so like it'll give me another, the Scout open, opens there, it will just give me another place to go do homework, which will be nice. In addition to Scout, Lassen's, and Rite Aid, a new bar and restaurant is opening where Bank of America used to be. The owners of Mother's Tavern, Shell Beach Brewhouse, and Rooster Creek Tavern are coming together to open up the new restaurant. According to Earl Olson, managing partner of Milestone Tavern, it'll be another couple of weeks until open as the crew gets ready. In the next couple weeks, University Square will be fully open with a new Blaze Pizza ready for business as well. Ayrton Osley, Mustang News. University Square will have a total of seven new businesses once the renovations are complete. Another Central Coast brewery is expanding its operations, this time an establishment and popular brewing on Monterey Street. Central Coast Brewing announced last week that it will be go expanding to a second location at 6 High Garrett Street, the, form of the former home of San Luis Motorsports. The new location will include expanded brewing productions, a new tasting room, and a restaurant. Owner George Peterson stresses that the Monterey location isn't closing. They simply outgrown their current location and have room to expand. Peterson hopes the new building will be open by August. Coming up after the break, 900 acres of land in Pismo Beach is preserved thanks to large donations. Also, at what cost did postponing the strike have on students? We'll have that and more after the break. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. Donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. Cinderella found the pet that fits her perfectly. Tiana gave her pet the royal treatment. Belle found beauty where no one else did. And you can too. Share your heart. Share your love. Bring home your forever friend. Make a shelter pet part of your world. Happily Ever After begins at theshelterpetproject.org. I wish I was in school. If only I had a math test today. I'll stay after class. I'll clean the chalkboard. I wish I was in school. School ends, but free lunches for your kids don't have to. Find your local food bank at feedingamerica.org slash summer meals for help. 900 acres behind Pismo Beach is saved thanks to donations from locals and tireless efforts of volunteers. Mustang News reporter Allison Royal tells us what makes this place so special. The Pismo Land Conservancy, or Pismo Preserve, is slowly becoming a local landmark. Many Central Coast residents drive by this piece of land every day and might not know it. 
These mountains behind me are the Pismo Land Conservancy. It's 900 acres, but it was almost houses. But it was saved thanks to Good Samaritans and $12 million. Sitting up against Highway 101 are the hiking and biking trails, picturesque coastal views, and various wildlife that make up the Pismo Preserve. The preserve was purchased for $12 million by the San Luis Obispo Land Conservancy, who got most of the money through donations by local and regional government agencies. The rest of the costs were paid for by locals, who also volunteered their time to build the various hiking trails on the preserve. That just makes my heart <laughs> just melt. I'm so grateful. I'm so appreciative that we live in a place where people value this kind of um, project and, and commitment to preserving land and habitat. And um, it's just a wonderful, wonderful community to be a part of. Mary DeGraff is a board trustee to the preserve. She, along with her husband Robert, have spent countless hours creating this natural park for the Pismo community. She says the process has been one of love and compassion. It really is striking such a chord for me. Um, to save land for future generations, to know something you did in your lifetime will leave a legacy that um, everyone can enjoy and, and experience is probably what people with kids feel. Allison Royal, Mustang News. The Pismo Preserve is still under development and will not be open to the public until the parking lot and trail systems are completed. The annual Pismo Kite Expo was held last weekend in honor of Cal Poly graduate Kingsley Thomas Wong. Thomas Wong died this March as a result of serious injuries from a kiteboarding accident back in 2010. Laura Hoover has a story. Thomas Wong created the expo 14 years ago and it continues to attract hundreds of people every year. Marina Chang partnered with Thomas Wong since the third year of the expo. She continues to run the event today, saying she owes her whole kiteboarding life to Thomas Wong. Kinsley touched so many people around the world. He visited over 30 countries. Uh, everywhere he, he went, he touched people. He had a smile that went a million miles that just touched people's hearts the world over. Kiteboarding is a unique sport that combines surfing and sailing. Kiteboarders use a large kite and the wind to steer their boards through the water, while gusts help the athletes do jumps and tricks. Kiteboarders can get more than 60 feet of air if the conditions are right. Jack Brown has been kiteboarding for five years and traveled from Long Beach, California to attend the expo this year. He explains why he loves the sport so much. I want a lot of wind, find the right conditions, the right kite, the right board, and see how high you can go. Brown says the best part of kiteboarding is catching the perfect jump. It's like heaven, you know? <laughs> You're up there just floating for a minute, you got time to look around and realize how high you are, and then you say to yourself, oh crap, I gotta get down. <laughs> this year, the Kite Expo took place at Grover Beach and lasted Friday through Sunday. Events included gear demos, a beach barbecue and bonfire, and fundraisers for the Thomas Wong family. On Sunday, people paddled out on their boards for a celebration of life in honor of Kinsley Thomas Wong. Laura Hoover, Mustang News. The Pismo Kite Expo was put on by Kiteboarder Magazine, Extreme Big Air, and Pismo Beach. In the fields on the Cal Poly campus, students are getting suited up for an unusual elective class. Mustang News reporter Dylan Ring shows us the Learn by Doing beekeeping class. But if you want to see how the tiny, you can actually start oh, seeing the, isn't that crazy, the color, how golden it is. This is just some of the honey that students help make in Cal Poly's beekeeping class. I got a chance to do some beekeeping myself and taste honey with the students. All right, I'm here with Tanner Paffenfuss. He's about to taste some of the honey that uh, Gerard just scooped out. Are you ready? Yeah. Go for it. Mm. Oh, you... it's so good. <laughs> Try it. Beekeeping professor Gordon Wardell helped me suit up for the class beforehand. Gordon says the suit's white color is neutral to bees and keeps them calm while the mask keeps CO2 from attracting bees. And I typically don't wear gloves uh, because I like to have the tactile sense of, you know, moving bees around with my fingers. Professor Gerard Loiza prepares the smoke that students spray before opening the boxes. We burn burlap and it's a natural thing and so it's just smoke, so the smoke, they breathe through their skin and so it helps to block communication between the hives. Take care of bees, like to have your own hive, it's like having your own pet. Still waiting for that first sting, I know I'm going to shoot a run away, they tell us not to run, but there's no doubt in my mind I'm taking off as soon as it happens though. Keep shaking. Take, take. No way! So many bees! Okay. 
So what we just saw was Gerard uh, taking a swarm from a tree and moving it into one of the box homes here. And uh, he was saying that there's a 50-50 chance that they take to the box. This is just another day for beekeeping in Apes 175. Back to you guys in the studio. Dylan Ring, Mustang News. The honey grown by the bees will be available for sale in the farmer's market and on campus in the coming weeks. Faculty from all 23 California State Universities agreed to strike April 13th through 15th and April 18th through 19th earlier this year. But after a tentative salary agreement was made on April 7th, the California Faculty Association announced they were postponing the strike. Kara Benson has more on how this postponed strike is affecting students. Students are dealing with canceling or keeping their plans after the postponed strike. Many students plan trips for these days off due to the strike. And while many students canceled their plans so they wouldn't miss class, some students, like Avery Fonserata, continued on with their travels. She made her plans of visiting a friend in Colorado back in the beginning of spring quarter. People were kind of saying, like, it's probably not going to happen. We don't really know. Like, and I was like, well, I already bought my plane ticket. Like, I'm going either way. Like, <laughs> She says she paid for the whole trip with her own hard-earned money. She even worked over spring break to make the extra money to make the trip possible instead of going home. Like, I felt like I needed to get out of slow for a little bit. I needed a little vacation. The money she would have lost canceling the trip wasn't worth the one day of classes she ended up missing. Classmates were able to give her notes from the lectures she missed. When asked if she thought skipping class was worth it, she had no doubts. Definitely worth it. One of the best trips of my, li of my life. So, Kara Benson with Mustang News. The salary agreement is tentative, so a strike might still be in our future. Coming up after the break, I'll bring you this week's Mustang News weather report. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad is cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Uh, Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. OK, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. OK, but remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. plan today. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Good afternoon, I'm Jillian Smith here with this week's Mustang News weather report. Starting in the South County, you can see up in northern Southern County, it's going to be around 70 degrees. As you move down, it's going to get a little bit cooler. All the way down into Vandenberg will be 65. Moving on to North County, about the same. Paso Robles, high of 77. As you move down, you're going to stay in the mid 70s in Creston, Tascadero, Santa Margarita, and a high of 72 in San Luis Obispo County. Uh, your beaches for today. Uh, northern beaches are going to be a little cooler with a high of 69 uh, Cayucos and 68 in Morro Bay. As you move down, Avila Beach, Pismo is going to be around 70. Same with Oceano. Moving on to your five day forecast, you can see it's going to be a high of 72 today with uh, about a low of 50. Tomorrow's going to be a little bit cloudy moving into your weekend, but should clear up for Saturday and Sunday with high of 74 and 72. 
um, starting off your work week with a little bit of a cooler weather with uh, 64. And that's all we have time for for weather. We'll bring you sports after the break. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. How much time have you spent teaching him? Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids uh, about yes, who to call, no. where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Hi, I'm Amelia Pereira, and here is your sports update. The 2006 baseball season is now in conference play, and the Mustangs are ready to continue against a well-known rival. Why Mustang offense is something to look out for. And a Cal Poly coach has been nominated for a big accolade. The Cal Poly baseball team is now 23-13 and, and has gone 4-2 and two in conference play. The Mustangs are currently on a three-game winning streak after dropping their season opener against the University of Hawaii last Friday. Junior first baseman Brett Barbier and freshman infielder Kyle, uh, Kyle Marinkons currently le lead the Mustangs with batting averages of .384 and .321, respectively. Marinkons says that offense is one of the Mustangs' main strengths. We're doing a lot of team hitting, so when, when you step up and it's your time to get a big team hit, uh, I think we've been doing a really good job with that. The, the fact that lately we've been doing that has made us a, a really competitive team. While the Mustangs are up to par on offense, players and coaches say that they will work on improving defense in order to stop the increase of fielding errors. The Mustangs still have 22 games left in the regular season. And the Cal Poly baseball team is at home this weekend for a very crucial three-game home stretch in Big West Conference play. After a 7-1 win against Fresno State on Tuesday night, the Mustangs welcome top seed rivals UC Santa Barbara to Baguette Stadium this weekend. First pitches are set for 6 p.m. on both Friday and Saturday and 1 p.m. on Sunday. All games will be aired live on ESPN 1280 The Ticket with Dave Grant providing the play-by-play. Links for live stats as well as audio and video streams are available on the baseball schedule page at www.gopoly.com. A familiar face in the men's soccer family is up for a big individual accolade. Head coach Steve Sampson has been nominated for the U.S. National Soccer Hall of Fame. Sampson is in his second year in charge of the Mustangs after leading them to an 11-5-5 record and their first berth to the NCAA tournament in seven years. Coach Sampson gave his reaction to this very big milestone in his career. What it demonstrates is that people are, are honoring what you've done in the sport. Um, and it's been very important to me that, you know, that the people know how hard I've actually worked for the development of this sport. Samson was the head coach of the U.S. men's national team for the 1998 World Cup in France and also won the domestic double with MLS side LA Galaxy in 2005. Hall of Fame voters can name up to five candidates on the ballot with voting conducted for a three-week period and the results announced shortly after. 
And that's all we have for sports. David Ayrton, back to you. Thanks, Amelia. Coming up after the break, a Cal Poly student is looking for some local talent to help him with his art. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. OK, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. OK, but remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Kids will spend 15 minutes watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Welcome back to Mustang News. An engineering student is a music producer in his spare time, looking to expand his work. Mustang News reporter Nikki Petkopoulos has the story. Engineering student Carlos Montez has a hard time balancing school and his music producing persona, Starrain. My biggest struggle as a student producing music really is just having enough time to do both. Um, electrical engineering is a pretty hefty major in terms of workload and time commitment. And I actually put all of my music making stuff away throughout the quarter just so I don't, you know, waste time on making music. Montez says that making music helps him express himself and de-stress from his difficult major. As Star Rain, the young producers found a community he feels he belongs in. For example, when Chainsmokers came to Cal Poly, uh, they heard of my music, so I got to hang out backstage with them, and that was pretty cool. And then also that's happened with like um, local artists, like Wolfgang Gartner is from Slo, so I got to hang out with him one day over the summer. And same thing with Max Styler, Mac J, and it's just having kind of that that network of artists around you is kind of pretty cool and pretty inspiring. Star Rain's electronic music requires a certain type of sound to express different emotions. The young producer is searching for a female artist with the right voice to sample from. Every song that I work on is a different experience. Some songs will be very melancholic. People, I guess, I would try to portray a feeling of sadness. Others portray a feeling of happiness or like good vibes. Other ones just like kick ass, you know, vibes where it's like if it's trap music, I don't know. It, it really all depends on just what song I make. Nikki Picopoulos, Mustang News. Montez is releasing new music soon and is currently holding tryouts for new vocalists. That is all the time we have today, or for today. You can check out mustangnews.com for more continuous news coverage. I'm David Klein. And I'm Eric Tanasley. Have a great weekend.